I'm probably gonna make like a lot of uh, noises oh, <laughs> along the way, which is a really bad habit that I picked up. from Toronto and I live in Toronto. Uh, yeah, I went to like a art high school called the Topical School of the Arts. So I was there for four years and now I just started my first year, or like I've just passed my first year at OCAD for their illustration program. Uh, mainly because it was kind of like convenient because I didn't want to leave Toronto. Like I was kind of deciding between whether to go to the States or stay here and I thought like here would be best. Um, and also the professors looked really cool in the illustration department so I was like I'm going to try it out see how it goes. Oh, that's like a good question. It's amazing. Yeah, I think it's just kind of like, I think the community that's in Toronto is like really cool and I'm still kind of like discovering like lots of parts of it. Um, but there's so many like young and amazing artists that I've met so far and I'm really excited to kind of like see what's like up and coming. Um, and I feel like it's just really accessible for like doing what you want to do sort of. Um, and like being able to like create like zines or t-shirts and stuff like that and selling them at like local like fairs and everything, um, which is really cool. like I've ever like sort of being comfortable with my style like it's just kind of like whatever comes to me in the moment because uh, like technically like there was never kind of like a second guess to kind of like creating art like I've just done it like naturally because um, I just love to do it so I'm like I might as well do what I love to do. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't even know how long it took to develop. I don't know, I guess it's like an ongoing process. Like, it's like if you look at the stuff even like two years ago when I first kind of like started like posting like my work online um, and even some of like my earlier like working comics, uh, it's totally kind of like changing uh, and still developing. Again, since I am very young, like I feel like I don't want to shut any doors with kind of like working on new techniques and like different um, mediums. So I'm constantly kind of like changing it up. But I still think there's kind of like repetitive like images that um, occur in my work a lot. I am black hole for your love. Oh, I don't, greasy teenage girl, I don't know. <laughs> my overall aesthetic, I, uh, I don't know. I've just been obsessed with monsters ever since I was a little kid. I've always had like a huge obsession with kind of like magical creatures. I'm like, I would always kind of create these characters because I didn't have a lot of friends. So they would like be my own like new friends. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily like describing my aesthetic. No, it's so true. Like I was actually, it's so funny that you mentioned that. I was going through like my old sketchbook the other day and like one of the images that I came across and I probably did it around uh, grade 10. Um, and it was so similar to kind of like the theme for one of my shows that I recently did and it's funny because it's like I haven't seen that image in like so long yet these kind of like constant characters keep on like reappearing within my work um, but sometimes I will like look back at kind of like older sketchbooks and be like wow like these are great because I wasn't really focusing on anything specific and they just kind of like I feel like the best best work always comes when you're not really have like a specific vision in mind like you just kind of naturally like have to have to put it onto paper or put it like recreate it however however you kind of picture it in your head um so that's kind of like that's why I like working in my sketchbook so much just because it's like such a free um, environment that you can really kind of like create anything you want to do without there being any like restrictions and there's no audience that you have to keep in mind like it's all for you um, so you really can kind of like do whatever you want to do. I said that already. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like I guess I'm constantly struggling between like being really happy with what I create and then like really like dissatisfied. But it's the process, I guess, that you have to really pay attention to. And as long as you learn something out of that, like who really cares what the final piece looks like? If you learn something from creating that work and kind of like um, and improving it for like the next time that you work on a piece so I think that's more important.
because I'll, I'll pick up pieces and be like, like halfway along, I'll be like, this is turning out so good, like I'm really liking this. And then I'll finish it and be like, oh shit. <laughs> but, but I guess I learned something, so that's always something good. <laughs> I first met Tavi at um, a rookie party that they had in Toronto at Magic Pony, um, and that's when I kind of like first met her. And I was like, "Oh, like I'm a Toronto like illustrator and stuff like that. If you ever need like help, I'm always around." Uh, and then a couple months later, they were like, "We'd love to have you on the team to do like comics for us." And it was like super nerve wracking at first because like before I used to do small kind of like one panel illustrations with kind of like a little bit of text, but I've never done like full on. Uh, comic book artwork so I was like I don't know if I could do this but it's rookie so I gotta do it <laughs> I gotta try something and like it's it's really forced me to kind of like try out new things that I would never think of doing previously well there's so much like amazing content that comes out of rookie and like so many also again like younger people kind of producing stuff and like I think it's definitely like encouragement because you're like whoa these people are, like regardless of whatever age, because like um, rookie contributors are kind of like a huge like age gap. There's not kind of like, it, although it's dedicated towards like teenage girls, there's also like older writers. So I think of like everybody on that team as mentors to, to my work. Um, and because I read Rookie before I was a part of their staff. And like just a lot of like the people who write articles and stuff like that have been such inspirations and shaped like my political views um, and made me reconsider my own actions and kind of like improve on them. A lot so I think their whole community that they've created is just so inspirational um, and yeah like everybody can learn something for it and like they're so open to having other people kind of like join in and it's again about education um, and learning from like others and teaching others which is really cool I think especially like with Ricky they've really again pushed me to kind of like try out like a whole bunch of content that we never thought to do and I've done like collaborations with people which I never thought I would like do in the future and everything so that's been really cool um, like I don't think my expectations were like lowered in any sense if not like super heightened um, at the fact that I was I was contributing and working with these guys and it's really cool too because like I feel like even like the fan base is so like relatable um, and it's like whenever I've been at any of the meetups and everything I'm meeting like really cool teenage girls who are interested in the same stuff as I am um, so that's never been like disappointed again um, sorry what was the question <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> go with it, go with it. Um, I remember when I first got the email, it was like, it was around like midnight one night and like I just saw like, hi, would you like to be a part of a rookie? And I literally shot my pants. Like I was like, you're kidding. Like this is fake. Like I cannot believe like, like what is happening right now. And I literally screamed and like my parents were like, what's wrong? Like are you having a heart attack? And I was like, oh my God, they asked me to be a part of the staff. Like I can't believe this. Um, uh, I don't know I'm even going with this. Um, but yeah, they're just like really cool. It's like having a whole bunch of like really cool older and younger sisters and stuff like that. Just so cliched and I feel like we should be all wearing like the traveling pants and stuff, but, but it really is. <laughs> yeah, because like, especially for Ricky, like they have like the themes of the month and they have the kind of editor's letter where she discusses what the, the theme of the month and like how the magazine is gonna like turn out like the content. Um, and it's really open, so it's like you can pitch whatever you want, um, but of course only some pitches get accepted. Um, but yeah, like I feel that uh, for comics especially, like sometimes I'll have like an idea for a long time and I'm like, oh, this is perfect for this month. Or sometimes um, I'll just kind of like have like a bad day and like maybe this would be a good comic that like a lot of people could relate to or this is something funny that happened in my life, so might as well kind of like write it down. Because, uh, like, a lot of my comics are, like, inspired by what I see in, like, everyday life of, like, my friends or myself or family members or whatever. Um, but usually those, I have, like, a mini sketchbook where, like, I do kind of, like, the panels. And I'm so bad with spelling and grammar, so I have to, like, spell check it three million times <laughs> afterwards. Um, but, yeah, like, I usually just write all of those again down my sketchbook. 
um, for like ideas to like hold on to or maybe like ideas for the future, I don't know. There's a great quote that I heard, I can't remember who said it, but it was something along the lines of like anybody can be an artist, all they have to do is like do it, right? And so that's kind of like the model that I go by, like I like to do it, I've never second guessed doing art. And like I remember there was this old woman, I was like selling my t-shirts at this like market or whatever last year and then there was this old woman who I had no idea who she was, just kind of like this old like tourist and stuff like that and she came up to me and she's like, oh you really look like you like to do what you're doing, that's so important because there's so many people in the world who don't like doing what they're doing, like me, and I was like that's so sad, but so true, I know, <laughs> but it's so true and it's like, oh man, that's so depressing, I don't want to be one of those people, like even if I might not get anywhere with it, I love to do it, so I'll make it work, right? And it sounds like you guys are doing that too, right? Um, even like, it's all about having like the motivation just to do it and like seeing how far you can get, get with doing that. Crying a little bit, then, uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, like I, it depends on like what it's for if it's more kind of like commercial work Then I'll usually usually do like a couple like thumbnail sketches mapping stuff out Usually throw those away because I don't like how they turn out uh, Usually like the best stuff kind of comes like spontaneously and like when I'm kind of really loose with it um, And just having fun with it um, When I'm working like super serious and super hard on something like I kind of don't like the final outcome um but I guess it's kind of like different situations depending on like different projects. When I do like an art piece, like it usually kind of like sometimes it starts off as like a small sketch in my, my sketchbook or sometimes like I'll just literally like throw paint onto the canvas and see what happens and go with it from there. Which is sometimes good, sometimes bad. But uh, usually it's kind of like spontaneous. But sometimes it can be more like thematic and like plan everything out. Like I've done some like sculpture and installation work. I find with like especially sculpture and installation you need a space to create which is really hard to find. So I'd definitely like to do more of that in the future. I also really want to do more like collaborations with people. Um, again for like larger installations. Actually me and my friends were like thinking of doing like this fabric piece together where she's harvesting cuttlefish ink. So we're gonna do that. I don't know how that will turn out. <laughs> but supposedly you can harvest cuttlefish ink and there's tutorials on YouTube. Um, but that would be something cool. I don't know, I'm completely open to, to new projects in the future. I wanna do more digital work as well. Kind of like experimental pieces cause I know how to use like a little bit of Photoshop. But it's mainly for like touching up drawings and everything. Um, but yeah, again, I don't want to close any of my doors to, to working with new mediums, so whatever is like available, then I'll totally take up the opportunity to do. Uh, checks my CV. <laughs> uh, I've oh I've well um I've worked with the Soho Lobby Gallery Space. That was kind of like my first show that I had, and that was last year in July. Um, and that was really cool because the woman who is actually she worked with OCAD, um, and that was kind of like my first introduction to kind of like working with like in a gallery space. And I had like these larger like watercolor um, papers and like um. Uh, clay sculpture panel work uh, which I have actually never posted anywhere like there's been some online but I haven't really like I kind of have like my stuff that I post on my blog that's kind of like quick sketches and everything and then kind of like my other like artwork that I like to do which I'm so bad with documenting so that's why they kind of like never see the day of light unless it's like at the space um, but yeah, that was like my first show and that was really cool and that was super scary. Actually, every show is really scary. <laughs> scary. Uh, I had another, my another, another big show that I had was at Articulations and that was in October uh, last year. And that was a really cool because I had like this huge window space to do this giant installation. Um, and I had this like mural of like black and white like monster like characters and then these giant like watercolor figures like hanging from it 
So that was really fun to kind of like experiment with like a new space um, and try out something that I would normally never have the opportunity to do in like my bedroom. Um, and that was like, a, yeah, it was so fun to work with uh, Heather and McKee who own Articulations and Articulations is like half of like an art shop and half like a gallery space, which is really cool. Um, and so that was my last show try. Uh, and then I also had an installation, again at Magic Pony, where it is, where it is also where I work um, currently. Uh, and they had for the Rookie event, the Rookie Year Book 2 launch, so they had kind of like a front gallery space, and then like the back part, uh, where I did another kind of like glow in the dark mural for their back wall, which is really fun. That's like a really hard thing to say, because like it's like, on one hand it's great, because it's like social media is kind of like, like again when I first like started posting my art I had like no intention like it was just again for me like a place to kind of like document like if you actually like scroll back into like the way like beginning archives it's on like shitty pieces of lined paper in like grade 11 when I'm like I hate school like I hate like I hate everything being like so cynical um, which is really hilarious to like look back now but it was just kind of like something fun for me um, to do and then like once I like it still weirds me out that like a lot of like I've gotten kind of like noticed and stuff like that which is great but it's still like whoa like it's so weird <laughs> I'm just like a human like I I feel like an ant like I'm more scared of other people than they are of me like that's like the motto that I always go by but um yeah like I feel like I had this incident that's still like like this girl was like stealing my designs actually and like a couple other artists on tumblr and like starbucks logos and like stuff like that like really big like commercial um like like kind of like stuff that was floating on like tumblr and like images that are really popular and producing them as her own t-shirts and like i tried contacting the company and everything and then you had to do like a cease and desist um and it was just a like time consuming like i'm a student i don't have any money to like back this up like, I tried sending her messages being like, can you just take the t-shirt down? Like, I don't care about the money. Like, I just want you to stop producing the t-shirts. Like, keep whatever you have. Uh, but then she got angry at me. And then she's like, stop telling your followers to like email me. I'm like, but whatever. Like, I just had to give up on that situation. So it's pretty, it sucks in that sense. Um, but I guess there's like pros and cons to like using social media with everything. Um... But like a lot of people, like sometimes I do get messages being like, can you make your t-shirts a little bit cheaper? And it's like, like I'm like, they like considering like how much like, cause especially like the t-shirts I'm doing at the moment are like all one off designs. Like they're all kind of like, they're like basically pieces of art. Like I can't charge, like it takes time to do it. it takes time to mail them, it takes time for the packaging for, for them and everything. Um, which I think like a, sometimes it's not considered into like the fees for like a lot of stuff. So I just kind of ignore those messages and everything. So it's like you really, and again my audience is like mainly teenagers so I totally understand that a lot of people don't have like the budgets for like some of this stuff. At the same point in time, I am a teenager myself. So like I know how expensive things are and it's like if there is a piece of artwork that I'm really like interested in buying I will make some sacrifices around it it's like the same thing it's like if you want the new iPod or whatever like you will go out of your way to kind of like make ends meet um, which is really important to consider and it's great to support like local artists because it's like you can support kind of like the bigger train like the bigger brands like Urban Outfitters and everything who also again they do have like kind of smaller artists like participating with them at the same point in time, it's like I'd much rather spend more money on a t-shirt from like a local zine fest and stuff like that than kind of like a stupid like whatever shirt I'm gonna wear once. Since they created like the Google like reverse like image shirt search, um, it's such a useful feature, like so accessible, everybody can put it in to kind of get the original source, so helpful to like independent artists and everything, but people are just like ignorant sometimes. I'm ignorant too, I've done it in the past, like I'm the first to admit it, but again it's just like making that like step forward to kind of like improving like yourself and helping support these independent artists. Oh, that's so hard. I guess like it's like constantly changing. Um, 
because there's like being like oh like I can't even begin to like describe like how many people like have inspired me even like stupid stuff that I've seen on the street uh, that kind of like inspires me within the minute um, like I just go through like waves of obsessions where like, I'm a very obsessional person and I'll have like this one artist or figure that I am like completely in love with so I'll just kind of like research every little fact about them um, so many like contemporary like Toronto based artists that are really cool I feel so weird like dropping their names though because a lot of them are my professors so <laughs> like it just seems like a really weird weird thing to bring up so many comic book artists um, have inspired me Charles Burns uh, Daniel Klaus, I love his work, um, especially like in grade nine, I was basically eating coleslaw, of course I was, <laughs> like, <laughs> that stereotype, uh, but she was like really like a big like cool inspiration to, to me and his stuff. <sighs> Jean-Michel Basquiat, uh, a huge one obviously, a lot of people kind of like see like do parallels between mine and his work. Played in <laughs> um, at all. Uh, he's not really contemporary though, I guess. So, so. Uh, Kara Walker's pieces. Um, she had, I don't know if you saw this actually. She had like the piece in New York. I think it's still going on the Sugar Baby uh, sculpture. So, um, that she did in her, her politics are so amazing. And hearing her kind of like uh, themes on her own personal story and kind of like uh, like universal themes towards her work is just so cool. Uh, again, so many of like the rookie artists are just like so awesome to see kind of like what work they're producing. Um, so many people on Tumblr too who are my age. Uh, I don't want to drop names though because I'm gonna like leave people out and feel so guilty about it. Um, but they're just really cool. Uh, I have a friend Carla who sent me like a lot of pieces who's really awesome. Gemma's really cool. Brie, Josie, uh, I can't even like begin to like describe like how many cool people there are on Tumblr. Oh man, Michael DeForge. I just cause like I like cause his first like introduction to his work that I that it did was actually really recently. It was um Ant Colony. Like I was familiar with his work before, but I read Ant Colony and I'm like this book is so weird but so cool at the same point in time. Um, I love like his use of color. It's just like something that I, like I've never kind of like so psychedelic but still kind of like muted like color tones and like his characters and I just love his storylines. Um, they're so interesting. I just am like the biggest fangirl of that whole group so it would be like <laughs> and I go to all these zine things and I'm like hi like nice to meet you. Uh, Jeanette's work I'm a really big fan of like I have a whole bunch of her like Rise of Graph zines um, but I like and I love her style um, I have some of her jewelry pieces that are just so cute and like so like um, unique <laughs> uh, that's so random <laughs> Just thought of another person who inspired me Dev <laughs> Dev <Heisel. laughs> so inspirational I saw his concert uh, uh, had to use my friend's fake ID. Don't know if I should be saying this. So embarrassing. So embarrassing. Oh, it doesn't matter. Like, it's like, I'll be 19 soon, but like, so embarrassing. I like showed it to him and he's like, nah, like, this is not, like, not for it at all. But he let me in. Thank you, whoever you are, parents are out there. But like when I saw his performance, like just to see somebody, like you could really tell he was just passionate about what he likes to do. And he was just doing it out of the sake of loving to do art. Like he had no expectations to kind of like please the audience or whatever. But like there was times when he would just like hit certain notes or do like a dance move, play his guitar or whatever, where I'm like, you really seem like a humble person and you really are just like love to do music. Like it's second nature because you love to do it so much. Um, which is just kind of like, again, such an inspiration. Like, that's what, like, I want to do. Um, I don't know, but he just looks like, like he was having so much fun up on stage. Uh, there was this beautiful piece that I saw at the AGO uh, for the Henry Moore and Francis Bacon exhibition. And I was a fan of Francis Bacon's work before. 
and I was a fan of Henry Moore too when I was like younger. I actually did a project with my movie girls. It's on YouTube. <laughs> See if you can find it. I'll give I'll give money to. No, I won't give money. Don't have that much money to spare. <laughs> but uh, like surround or like that had like Henry Moore statues. I don't know. Stupid. Anyhow, um, but there was like this Francis Bacon piece that I saw that he did of his his lover. Um, who died um, a couple months after the painting was uh, was finished and it was just something like like I had to like I just was in awe of kind of like what like aura he created with it I don't even know if that's the right word for it but just kind of like this presence that he created with the painting was just so personal and honest and like authentic um, that I was like, oh, I just want somebody to kind of like find like the same realization I did within this piece as they do within my work. I don't know if I have or if it's ever achievable, but it's great to kind of like inspire people and have like that dialogue literally just between the person and the artwork. Um, and again, when viewing artwork, like there's so much to take into consideration of like who you are as a person at that time. Um, but yeah, like I just hope to kind of like create create that sense. There's an oh, I wish I had the book on me, but there's this beautiful passage in in the Marcel Duchamp interview um, that just says, oh, maybe I'll see if I can find it. I think I wrote it down somewhere. But it's just like this beautiful kind of like passage about the the interviewer reviewing why that Marcel created artwork. And he said he had very little money and he had very kind of like little expectations but again he just wanted to create authentic art and that's why so many people connected to it because it was just who he was um, which i hope to kind of like do the same i would love to do like a huge mural space again um, i thought that was really fun and was just kind of like on a new like canvas that i've never like um have had the opportunity to kind of like work on um oil painting is something that i'd really like to be good at but i fucking suck at it so badly i don't even know how i pass like my painting and drawing class like my paintings were like so bad so it's like i wish i could have oil painting but like i guess that will come with time hopefully i don't have the patience for it but maybe i'll develop it um Honestly, like just kind of like I really want to collaborate with like more people is like my main um, Main kind of like inspiration. I just want to kind of like wider in my community um, And connect to other kind of like young and new artists Oh man, I just don't want to close any doors like I want to print more zines. I don't do enough of that I want to create more artwork. I don't do enough of that <laughs> uh, I want to do more t-shirts don't do enough of that <laughs> Uh, more commercial work even. I hate doing commercial work. I hate doing design work, but like I think it's like a really fun challenge uh, I don't necessarily like the final outcome But it's kind of like that fine kind of like I don't like doing this But I really like doing this because I'm kind of competitive so I'm competitive with myself to like uh, turn out the outcomes for that uh, have like more gallery showings like whatever like opportunity that comes up like I totally want to take it I definitely would love to work on like a new um, solo show again um, if that possibility comes up um, but yeah like collaboration with other artists just because it's like creating an artist community is so important because they're your peers and they inspire you to kind of create more too as well um, yeah which is really important <laughs> This is what he likes to do. Like it's like there's so much spots like on the floor. Oh my God. I actually think that will be easy. No. Other spots that he could sit. Oh but is this is this like distracting? <laughs> Cat butt like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the whole interview. This is how it went down. It's actually a podcast. Yeah. Which is just Yeah. <laughs> The real star. Kendra's not a real human being. It's a cat. It's a cat who does all the work. 